Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming online. And I'm going to brief you about the way that we provide support for people who are doing PMP exam preparation. We have a course coming up that's starting next week, and uh, some features of it are, are not all that widely known in the marketplace. So therefore, I thought it would be a good idea to share them with you so that you have a better idea of, of what we're offering. Just to say, as a starting point, that, that's myself, Jasuno Krahor, and um, what we do at Scatterwork is we help you become a successful project manager. It's really focused on the individual and by showing you how to manage projects based on personal experience. And of course, part of that is study. And uh, to do that, uh, we support you to, to meet the challenges that come and to decide what to do about them and um, get through to success in that way. So we have some well-known clients and many, many others over the years, a lot more smaller ones that uh, you probably wouldn't recognize if we put the names up. And we've worked in a lot of different sectors. Um, and the team that we have is, uh, is, is very supportive. People in, in uh, a number of different countries uh, with different experiences, several of us hold doctorates, several of us hold engineering degrees, uh, several people speak different languages and so on. So it's a really good sounding board um, within the team uh, to be able to support uh, people who have project challenges. And we've worked across the world, mostly, as you can see from that, on a line from Europe to Asia, <laughs> with um, uh, s some other countries in between, particularly, and uh, over most European countries, in fact, although there's no space for them on the drawing there. Okay, so what do we do? Well, what we do is that we have basically two sides to our action. And one of them is called Prime Project Program. So this is where we support people directly on their projects. And um, you could describe that as, as coaching or as um, consultancy and so forth. And we have some structured programs as well in there. But that's not the purpose of today. The purpose of today is to talk about the PMP exam, because that's another way of supporting people, is that if uh, all the people in the company um, use the same method, uh, or the methodology, then obviously it makes life easier. Otherwise, you're really starting from zero every time. So if you don't wish to be on the recording, this is a good time to, um, to pull out. And if you have any comments, you can write them in the chat and then um, I'll, I'll respond to them as they arise. Okay, so this is what I want to talk about for the next few minutes. Um, what is PMP? What are the exam requirements? Study time. And, and then our PMP exam prep program, uh, which I believe is, is very effective. And then uh, subsidies and booking links for anyone who'd be uh, uh, applying for uh, study around this time. So the first thing is, what is PMP? And I guess most of us know, but it, I, I mention it just for completeness, that it's the most widely recognized project management credential worldwide. Um, over the years, the numbers have built up and it's well over a million now, the exact number. Obviously, it changes as time goes on. And, and some of the, the, the people who did it longer before, they, they've, um, they've, uh, they've passed on to another world. But it, it, nevertheless, that there are hundreds of thousands of people who have done this so it's very widely recognized and the organization that supports it is called the project management institute and one of the people involved at the beginning told me they didn't really intend to do an exam but after so many years of project management institute they said it would be a good idea to to write down the things that they had learned and um, so they did that and then uh, people would say, well, how do, how do we know that you, you, you know, you've learned it? Um, and so then um, exams uh, came into view. And then uh, over the years, it became very well established. So I think most of us are probably familiar with that. Um, it's very widely um, sought. I went into LinkedIn to have a look and see how many uh, jobs are showing up. Um, just for example, in EMEA. And uh, it's showing uh, on this particular search over 8,000 jobs that are looking for PMP qualifications. So it's very well recognized. Okay, so what do we need to do it? 
to, to pass the exam. So the, the uh, there are two ways of doing it. One is with a college degree and the other is without. Uh, and uh, the basic difference is that they look for more experience um, if you uh, came, uh, shall we say, through an apprenticeship or something like that um, into the world of work and that you got your experience in that particular way. Um, they look for um, rather more hours of managing products uh, projects. But the basic idea is the same. 4,500 hours is really a translation for three years. Um, there's a sort of a notion that a, a year of work is about 1,500 hours. It varies by country, um, but that, that, that's the rule of thumb that is used there. So you have to document that on your application form that you have this number of hours um, doing um, uh, project management, managing projects, in other words. And then there is a, 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 an administrative requirement, if you like, that you have 35 contact hours of study. So in the old days, that was a, a week. You know, it was a, a five-day course, something like that. So, so yeah, that's about right. Um, and the way the exam works is it checks your knowledge. It doesn't check your competence. Um, but your competence is guessed at. If you've got 4,500 hours, they say, well, that's our measure of, of competence. But the exam itself measures knowledge, something you can learn. OK, and then they introduced an adjustment in the last uh, year or so where people who had the CAPM exam, which is based on the same material, the very same material on the PMBOK guide, um, uh, if you have that, uh, then, then you don't have to do these contact hours. So CAPM is an easier exam, um, and it doesn't have these hours of management experience requirement. So you could, for example, do it while you're a student at college or, or you know, a year or two after you start work or something like that. Um, but if you do have it, it counts instead of the 35 hours. Okay, so that's fine. But actually, the reality is that you need a lot more than, than um, 35 hours to pass the exam. The uh, statistics are there. Um, I've heard people say 150 hours, although I think that's a bit exaggerated. I have supervised myself courses where the study time has been measured and uh, 80 or 100 hours tends to be a sort of number you can expect. And in very round numbers, if you think of it as being a 35 hour course, and if you did plus two more weeks like that, then that would bring you up to around 100, 110, 120 hours, something like that. You're certainly not going to pass with 50 hours study. Um, it doesn't matter how much you know, um, you know, it is an exam and they have their own terminology and that takes time to, to bring in. So it's not just experience. But of course, if you do have experience and particularly in a company that uses that methodology um, then the, or that terminology, then you'll, you'll find it much easier to, to, to um, do the exam. And um, uh, as you can see there, um, you can reduce the number of hours of study by using systematic proven study tools. So that's something that we have. I think one of the things that wastes a lot of time is that people, you know, they learn something at a course or from a book and they didn't quite understand it. And then they spend hours sort of trying to work it out. And that's time. And it, a really good way um, to avoid that is to look at a different book or to ask a different person. And uh, they say, this is my way of saying it. And then, you're, oh, yeah. And then all of a sudden, it becomes very easy. So part of our method is to allow that so that you have actual contact with people so that you can ask them. And um, so the way the program works is you do the 35-hour course at the beginning. There are people or organizations, um, uh, competitors of ours in the market, if you like, and they do the 35-hour um, course at the end. And then maybe immediately afterwards, you do the exam. So it's sort of a high-pressure approach, and it certainly works. Um, but it's, it's not the easiest way of doing things. We do it a different way. The way we do it is you start with the 35-hour course and you learn as much as you can. And our particular format for the next few weeks, but it, it, it can be others, but this is the way it is, this particular run, is to have Tuesday and Thursday evenings for five weeks. So that's 10 
10 sessions of three and a half hours. So that adds up to 35 hours. Mm. And then um, if you have a, a number of people in the same company or the same organization and they all want to do it together, then they can define their own schedule. They can do it evenings or weekends or, you know, different time zones or whatever. Um, but the, the, the critical mass, if you like, is eight people. And if you tell us that you've got eight people, then we can work out a different schedule um, pretty well, anything that you would need. Now, there is a thing here that you can... Um, uh, you can also look on scatter work and you can find um, a, a page there with, that will actually show you um, what other courses are coming up. So we advertise this particular course is evenings and weekends. But if you go onto the scatter work link, you'll find other courses that are run, for example, from Monday to Friday in various different time zones. And it may happen that one or other suits you. So that's the first thing that we do is the 35 hour course and then systematic study. So we have an approach um, which is, is documented. It's, it's not high technology or anything, um, but it mean it takes you consistently through the different subjects. We have quizzes that are online and so on. And a rather important thing is a, a, um, a, an exam simulation. Now I say simulation and the reason is this. Um, PMI it cannot uh, make sure that nobody ever sees any of their questions, except the way they actually do it is when you go and do the exam, you can't take paper into the exam, you can't take a telephone and so on. So they're reasonably certain that nobody is, shall we say, selling the, um, the questions on the dark net. Huh? But to avoid that, they would need millions of questions. And that, that would be another way of doing it, but it's not the way they do it. So. Um, the result is that they, although the, all of us who have gone through that system know how it works and so on, um, the, the exact uh, exam uh, substitute, if you like, um, is, is an estimate. And all the suppliers do that, and they all have um, something that is similar in their uh, opinion. But the important thing about it is that we have statistics that when people get a certain mark, they nearly always pass. And when I say nearly always, over 99% of the time. So we have a, a, an exam simulator. And at, the, at each section, you run the exam simulator. And, and then you say, oh, yeah, I've, you know, I've got to that level. And then you move on to the next bit. And um, then you have access um, to the trainers, so you can send them messages. But if you want to, you can say, hey, I'd like to talk to you and turn that into a video conference. Um, and very often it'll be the, with the trainer you had, but it may be with some of their colleagues as well. And the support there is not only for the content, but it's also things like how do I fill out the application form and so on. Then you get access to the database, to all the material of the course, the slides, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then we also give you the opportunity to resit the exam. If, for example, you say, oh, there's a section there, I'm not so sure. If we have another course running a week or two later, yeah, fine, you can sit it on that, um, provided the course is not totally full. Um, but there's a way, you know, you can, you can uh, check for that and request and um, we'll, we'll find a way of fitting you in somewhere. And then another thing that we have to make the study easier is that we have an exam cost guarantee. So if you get that level that I mentioned um, uh, of uh, knowledge, you know, you're able to do the test and you reliably get over the mark that we know um, is an indication that people pass. If you do that and then you do the exam and fail, we will actually pay your, your exam fee for, for sitting it again. But the reality is that it hardly ever happens, to be honest. Um, but it's there to make it easier for you. So we've got all of those things. You've got, you've got contact with, with the, your own teacher and with others. Um, you've got all the material. You've got things like quizzes and you've got things like the, um, the mock exam. Um, and then you have the statistics that we have. And then the trainers will also help you um, put the application together um, and to word it in such a way that it's likely to be accepted and so on. And then you do the exam. And um, uh, typically people go through that study cycle 
in shall we say eight weeks so if say if you've got 70 hours i said plus the course itself say you have 70 and you do it in seven weeks say in eight weeks then it's about 10 hours a week uh, um you need to put in so five hours twice so you might get up early on saturdays and do it for five hours and then do it on tuesday evenings or something like that so it's it's not trivial uh, but it is achievable that's the whole point and the the, the Another point is that you can do the exam when you're ready. You don't have to work against a deadline. Um, but we do know from experience that people who drag it out and they say, oh, I'll get back to it after the summer and so on. They always say that was a mistake. So there you go. That's the way that we do it. So the next thing is to do with the um, how do you do the um, booking? And um, there are two different ways of doing it. We have an arrangement with an organization in Ireland called the Skillnet, which is basically funded by um, the industrial companies have to pay a levy, which is available to them only for training purposes. And the Skillnet uh, collects the money and then the Skillnet di di disperses it. And um, what it does is it supports an administration so that in a particular industry or in a particular area of the country, um, there will be a process running for finding out what courses are needed and so on, and, uh, and booking people into courses, all that sort of stuff. And then if you do the course, um, some of the money that's in the pot is used to subsidize it. So in fact, the company gets it less, uh, but obviously they pay for it in the, in the fee, in the, um, the levy. But what it really means is that everyone pays the levy, and if you want to get your money's worth, well, then you do your training through skill nets, and there are about 70 of them. So this particular skill net, um, we have an arrangement with them. And if your company is a member of the International Financial Services skill net, um, of which there are about 300 companies, if your company is a member, then the fee is 1199 including the exam fee, which uh, if you check it up, you'll find is very, very competitive. And we have a link here that you can go to for that. Now, other people may want to do the, the course, of course, and they may not be working for the skill uh, for a skill net company. And um, so we have a different arrangement there. We have a different link, um, which you can click on when I send you the slides. And um, this link will take you to a booking form. And in the booking form, uh, there's, there's, there's the fee. But if you include this code by the end of April, TEH63, if you include that code, it will automatically calculate a reduction for you. Uh, so that's for people that are I, maybe not in the skill net or, or elsewhere in Europe, for example, or, or indeed anywhere. Uh, but from time zone viewpoint, it's more likely to be interesting for people in, in uh, somewhere in the European continent. So two separate ways. If you end up on the wrong one by mistake, it doesn't matter. We, we, we redirect you. But the, the first one, you don't need cash to book. Um, because the booking it will be paid by your your employer and so on and uh, so you can say i'm interested and then, then they can book you for it and um, on the other one uh, you need a credit card which you can i guess recoup as a as a business cost so that's the story um pmp is not the easiest of exams um, it's based on um, about 10 or 12 recommended texts. And one of them is the one that you will surely have heard of. It's called the PMBOK guide, which is from the Project Management Institute. Up until the last version of the exam, that was the main reference. Uh, but now they say it is a main reference, but there are lots of other main references as well. So you, you can't just sort of read one book and learn everything. Um, so you know, how do you do it? Well, you go to a course, um, you interact with other people, you read other books, um, you interact with the trainers, um, you do test questions on paper, and then you do them through the system and so on. And when you get to that, that famous level, that critical mass level um, for the area, you can, you can do the, the, the uh, simulated exam. And if you pass on that, you can move on to the next section and you work your way through. So there you go. So 
if anyone has any questions, please feel free to, to contact me there. And um, I hope you find uh, that it, uh, this helps you um, pass the exam. So thanks very much.